log party little thoughts. Plenty of music, new and old. It's nice to hear that block party track again. We were just saying none of us had heard that for ages. A pleasure to revisit these things. Right then, no Glastonbury this year, which is a little bit, you know, a bit of a downer in some ways, although judging by last weekend's weather, perhaps it was just as well. Sorry if you're at the Isle of Wight and, <laughs> and caught any of that mudlarking uh, escapades type thing. But there are a lot of other festivals going on, so as usual, we're doing a weekly catch-up with some of the more boutique dues. But the one that we're going to talk about this week does have a link to Glastonbury. It's the Strummer of Love Festival, and I've got the director, Trish Whelan, on the line now to tell me more. Are you there, Trish? You on one? Where's she? On, on that one? Sorry, I had the wrong fader. Trish, you there? I sure am. Hiya. Thank you Hi, very Lauren. much for talking to us today. So listen, yeah. I, I said a little bit about the festival, um, that it is commemorating the 10th anniversary of Joe's death, right? Joe's drummer's death. It is indeed, yeah. And it did, did the idea come about from the fact that, you know, there was no Glastonbury this year. So obviously, Strummerville is, is part of Glastonbury most years. And you kind of caught a fallow year and it, it came together that way. How did it happen? That's exactly what happened. It sort of made itself, to be honest. And obviously, if there was a Glastonbury, we'd be there where we always are by Joe's memory stone up in the unfair ground. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were disappointed, obviously, no Glastonbury. But we felt the most appropriate way to celebrate Joe and his legacy was to have a big campfire in a field and make our own little festival. Well, it sounds like it's going to be lovely. Where's it going to be happening and who's on the bill? It's in Somerset. It's in the Blackdown Hills. It's really, really beautiful, actually, um, in an area of exceptional natural beauty. Um, so hills that Joe frequented and loved to walk and... Um, Got a really diverse bill, got, um, you know, lots of great friends of Joe's and people he played with, people who were influenced by him, lots of great new music. Um, so we've got people like um, The Pogue, C60s, Billy Bragg. Um, we've got Mick Jones and the Justice Tonight Band closing down the festival, uh, doing Clash songs live, which I think will be really special. And then we've got new, exciting new bands like... Um, Bastille, who are a band we've been working with for a long time at the charity, and um, Dog is Dead, Sonic Boom 6, Reverend and the Makers. So, um, yeah, just a really diverse, really exciting lineup, I think. It sounds great. There's also sort of non music stuff going on, is that right? So, you've got Speaking Suppers, Drummer oh, School. We have. We've got, um, you yeah, know, Speaking Suppers is um, really interesting, actually. It's a uh, uh, set up by Victoria Mary Clark in Dublin and it's um, encouraging people to learn how to do public speaking. So there's going to be a night nice on the Saturday evening where people can come and talk about Joe and his memory and we've got Jazz, Joe's daughter, um, I've got this fantastic cornucopia of crafts um, called The Handmade Hangout where she's got people coming from all over the world to talk about uh, sort of rock and roll and punk rock crafts. And um, then we've got her mum, Gabby, is heading up our amazing healing circle where we've got um, the Druid who did the stone circle at Glastonbury right. officiating over our opening ceremony. And we've got the Pea Stone from Glastonbury and lots of amazing healers on the sort of highest point in the land. It's and then, of course, we've got a huge campfire and all... Uh, the sort of cream of our crop and bands that we've been supporting at the charity playing kind of pretty much 24-7 on there, basically. So, it, um, well, I was just going to say, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because, you know, you talk about kind of, you know, the healing circle and the druids and stuff. And, and that, we think of that as kind of very hippie, you know. And I think often punk is portrayed as, well, and it, re it really was. It was a kind of kicking against that and the old kind of never, never trust a hippie attitude. And, yeah. and, but often seen as something quite negative. Um, and, yeah, it's funny. I watched um, the uh, subculture program last night that Don Letts made where he interviewed lots of... Uh, I watched the punk one, and um, it's kind of interesting, you know, how um, punk is so all-inclusive, really. It isn't, you know, it wasn't about the, the, you know, the Mohicans necessarily. It was an attitude. It was about do it yourself. It was about, you know, get on with it, try and make a difference, try and change something. And I guess that's really, 
you know, is all inclusive, isn't it? It's yeah. not just about, you know, the sort of, um, you know, the guitar riffs at the end of the day. It's, it's and an spiky hair. and a mentality so, and, uh, yeah. you know, big vibration, really. Okay, so listen, all the proceeds um, go to the charity. Is that right, Strummerville? They sure do. But people might not know about that. What can, for, for those of us who don't know so much about the charity, tell us a little bit about where that money will go. Uh, well, we're a very grassroots charity. We give access and opportunities to people through music who wouldn't normally have access to them. So um, we um, support lots of emerging talent. We put people in studios. We connect people with... You know, people who can actually help them and try and um, sort of take the mystery out of really making music. Um, and we give people a platform to be heard. So um, we have, like, free rehearsal spaces in London. We have a studio with Fair Tunes in Bogota and Colombia. We have um, just opened a music room in Sierra Leone last week. I where was we looking at that on the website. Doing pretty much 24-7 workshops and getting them set up and we sent in a container load of instruments because after 10 years of civil war they lost all their instruments there yeah. so um, uh, yeah so very quite diverse we're working on a project in Detroit at the moment um, and we have a kind of everything on our website really um, we have a platform for new music so people it was called the DIY platform and it's where bands can put up their music and you know connect to a community of people who actually care about music and okay. i guess because of the joe legacy we don't get you know bad music we get you know people who try and connect with you know people who are trying to say something that they feel is important right and trying to make the world a bit of a better place and give a bit of give a bit of hope really you know raising a raising the vibration and um, We're up for it, Trish. It sounds fantastic. Fantastic. So, I hope you can come, Lauren. Where, where can we find out more, Trish? Uh, strummeroflove.com. Okay, strummeroflove.com. Thank you so much for talking to us, Trish yeah, Whelan. Thanks for your support. Have a lovely day, hon. Take care. Lots of love. Bye, Bye, you too. Raise the vibration. Trish Whelan, director of the Strummer of Love Festival. Absolutely amazing. What a beautiful idea as well, bringing music back to Detroit. There's tons of great stuff going on. So, um, yes, do look them up. It's going to be good, I think, this summer, this August. 